Future trends, deep insights, industry leaders. This is the iGaming Next podcast with your host, Pierre Lint. This podcast is brought to you by Pragmatic Solutions, the leading iGaming PAM platform with a modular approach, including many benefits like a fast, secure, and scalable API-based platform integrated with all major third-party products and services. Make sure you head over to Pragmatic Solutions and join our smart thinking. This podcast is brought to you by YOLO Group, bringing next-level innovation to the worlds of gaming, fintech, blockchain, and more. Serving millions of users worldwide, YOLO Group is committed to putting the customer at the center of the universe via a wide range of fun, fast, and fair products and services. YOLO continues to drive crypto adoption and fintech innovation within both the iGaming and entertainment industry via its array of disruptive B2C and B2B brands. To find out more, visit YOLO.com. All right. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, and uh, welcome, Gustav Hofstad, to the podcast. How are you doing today, Gustav? Thank you, Pierre. Uh, I'm fine, thank you. Uh, slightly tired because yeah. I didn't get much sleep last night. Oh, I can imagine so. I can imagine so. And just as we are starting here now, we 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 speaking English now. We spoke before the podcast that uh, you know our native language, uh, Chinese, is not something we can speak, speak here in the podcast. So we're switching over to English now. Yeah. Uh, well, but uh, I, anyway, your Mandarin is just beautiful, but it's okay to yes. speak English as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. English it's, it's better for the podcast. But basically, uh, we, we are both Swedish, uh, Gustav, and and uh, we are jumping on on board to this emergency podcast today, essentially, um, to talk about the Swedish election and as a, just as a short introduction here Gustav obviously you're the general secretary of BOS basically who represents the online gambling industry in Sweden uh, towards the uh, politicians towards the regulator and so on and so forth uh, but just as a starting point here maybe you, you, you want to expand on this a little bit what's the uh, work BOS have done in the last couple of years? Uh, well one thing that we hopefully contributed with was to convince uh, the Swedish parliament uh, and the Swedish government to abandon its uh, monopoly model. Uh, we are, of course, extremely thankful for listening to, to our advocacy uh, and that they changed that monopoly system uh, in favor of a licensing system. Uh, mm. To give you one example of, of, of uh, uh, policy efforts that we are really proud of. Yeah. Brilliant. And also, you have a background in the uh, moderate party, Swedish, which is uh, very likely now than to uh, to take uh, to, to take over uh, the, the the Swedish government in the in the right wing coalition uh, here. That is uh, looking very likely to win. Uh, so, at the time of this recording, which is Monday afternoon, the election is not entirely uh, uh, calculated yet, but uh, somewhere in the range of 90, 95 percent. It's looking like it's going to be um, a shift in government from the left-leaning coalition to the right-leaning coalition uh, led here by the by the moderate party. Um, and also something that I see a lot on Twitter now is um, discussion around the um, kind of far right-wing uh, party that is uh, looking to become the second biggest party in Sweden, the, the, the Swedish uh, Democrats, uh, basically, the Sverige Demokraterna. And um, uh, obviously this uh, party has... Um, Roots uh, towards kind of yeah neo Nazism in the in the nineties. That's where the party was born from. But in the um, in the last uh, say fifteen years or so, uh, they've been more trying to clean 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 their act up essentially and uh, become more a party for the uh, for a bigger demographic. And they have now then uh, become the second biggest party. And they are belong to the right wing coalition here. So just as a starting point, Gustav, can you explain a little bit um, if the uh, right-wing coalition would win. Uh, what uh, role with the, will the Swedish Democrats play in this coalition? Since they will be the biggest party in the coalition, does this mean that they uh, also will fill the prime minister's spot? Or what's, the, um, what's their role in this uh, uh, coalition? Well, well, to begin with, the, the history that you described is, of course, really to, to the Sweden Democrats regarding uh, their background from from uh, the 1990s, uh, uh, and um, uh, it, it is also concerning that 
we have a uh, extreme right wing as well as a twin uh, representation in Sweden with a history from, in one case, uh, neo-Nazism and in the other case, uh, communism. That is obviously extremely, extremely disturbing. Uh, when it comes to, to uh, between uh, the, the matured uh, center-right wing parties, the moderate party, the liberal party and the Christian Democrats, the cooperation between those three parties and the Sweden Democrats uh, it's extremely likely that, that uh, the Sweden Democrats will not um, be offered a, a seat in the Swedish government. However, the, Swedish, uh, the Sweden Democrats will play a role to, uh, to that government. And that supporting role will, of course, not uh, come without a price. Uh, that support will cost, uh, and um, in, in many political issues, uh, it is um, highly uh, likable that, that uh, the Sweden Democrats will, will demand uh, a political influence uh, that, that in some respect uh, mirrors the, the, uh, the kind of power that, that the Swedish voters have given to the, to the Sweden Democrats, namely approximately uh, 20%. So every fifth Swede voted uh, for for the Sweden then today Sunday yesterday. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. Uh, and obviously, if uh, this um, change in government take place, this is the first time since I think 2012, uh, where the, um, the 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 left leaning coalition have been ruling uh, since 2012. So in the last 10 years, essentially. And obviously, during this time is where. Uh, you and others in the in our industry have been lobbying for uh, this uh, gambling regulation, um, and obviously, if the ministers change and and so on and so forth, like wh what uh, what do you think will how will this impact? Do you think uh, the, um, the the state of Swedish online gambling? It's a really good question. Just to begin, I think actually that that the last time we had a centre right wing government was. Two 14 and not oh, 14. 12, Sorry. but it really doesn't matter. Yes. Uh, well, uh, I would like to highlight two aspects of that. One is, is uh, the individual that will become the, the gambling minister, so to speak, minister in charge of, of uh, gambling regulation. Uh, and it's, it will be extremely interesting regardless whether it will be a centre-right wing government or or a, a continuation of, of the social democrat which appears to be less uh, likely as it looks uh, now when we speak on Monday. Uh, uh, because it's not just uh, a question of, of um, socialism versus center-right wing. Uh, it, al it is also a question of, of uh, uh, the, the personal quality of the individual that will become uh, the minister. And, and uh, I am, of course, extremely supportive and thank Mr. Ardalan Shekarabi's initiative to abandon the gambling monopoly uh, and uh, in 2019 change it to a, a licensing system. Having that said, uh, I am um, quite negative towards his is how he handled the, the licensing system after its introduction. I do believe that, that he favorized uh, gambling operators with a close connection to the Social Democratic Party. I do believe that he didn't uh, care too much about maintaining good uh, relations when it comes to gambling policy efforts, uh, not just in, in relation to us as a, uh, as a trade association, but also other political parties in, in the parliament. Can, can so, you give some examples of that, Gustav, just uh, for some more nuance, like these, uh, these operators who are favoring the social democrats, who are they and what advantages have they got them? Uh, well, they don't pay tax. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> that's for, a good start. <laughs> yeah, that's a good start. And for example, um, the, the, the trotting uh, company ATG in, in Sweden, they have a representative in their board from from Democratic Party. And it came to no surprise to me that during the pandemic, uh, 
uh, sports betting was not initially, but after a while, uh, excluded from the kind of restrictions that that uh, on the post to, to to online casinos. Uh, so, well, I just gave you two examples, and and uh, I can, yeah. can continue yeah. if we have more time. Sorry to interrupt you, uh, there, Gustav. Uh, um... And uh, it's interesting to hear the the work that the social democrats uh, have done uh, so far in the um, in in getting the uh, regulation uh, launched, uh, basically, and the work that Ardell and Shakarabi has done uh, to to lead it's not always perfect, as you as you mentioned here. But can you can you go back to talk again about uh, what uh, this potential shift in government will mean to the gambling industry if the right wing coalition would take over? Yes, it is of course not only a, a question of of uh, uh, who will become the the minister in charge. Uh, obviously, or at least hopefully, uh, we will see some some policy changes. Regardless, policy changes that are connected to to the the difference in in policy between those parties. And one such uh, important thing may be that, uh, well, we've seen that both the moderate party and the Sweden Democrats, they have suggested that uh, a privatization of one of the two entities of of the state-owned gambling company, Svenska Spel. Uh, Svenska Spel is operating on the uh, market that is still under a monopoly, uh, and no political party uh, really suggests uh, to, to privatize that part. However, Svenska Spel is also uh, operating on the competitive market, meeting competitors like Bet365 and Betson and, well, you know the names, uh, members of, of Maya Association, obviously. Um, and um, the suggestion from the moderate party and the Swedish uh, the Sweden Democrats is to, to privatize that part of, of Svenska Spel. And that is obviously a huge bite of of uh, uh, the Swedish uh, gambling market, so uh, I would find I would welcome such development, uh, and it, it is obviously very early still, and and uh, gambling regulation and possible privatizations will certainly not be on the top agenda for for the perhaps uh, Prime Minister uh, Ulf Kristersson these coming weeks. But uh, finally, uh, when a government uh, a government is is um, formed, I, I do believe that that uh, this topic will be highlighted. Yeah, interesting. And uh, Moderaterna, the the right wing coalition, has a history of privatization. Right, the last time the government, uh, it was uh, the the pharmacy was mm. uh, uh, was privatized and, and other. Uh, other sectors uh, as well. Yeah, exactly. Also, the vehicle test institutions, or whatever it's called right. in English. Uh, so right. yes, they do have a history uh, of that. Uh, and since they have been so uh, clear on on their agenda prior to the election, I certainly hope that that will reflect uh, their opinion also after the election. Yeah, yeah, and. Uh, the Swedish uh, Democrats, uh, just to ask again, uh, they are traditionally a, a quite conservative uh, uh, party. So they, they, it's uh, law and order, um, protecting the elderly, uh, and so on and so forth. And, and although they belong to the right wing government, uh, their policies are not always uh, aligned with the right wing uh, coalition, so to say. Uh, have they spoken anything about? Um, uh, or do you know anything about their stance on the gambling regulation in general? Like, uh, uh, how have they commented in the past when the regulations was rolled out? Or have you had conversations with them? Or what, what's their general stance uh, when it comes to online gambling? Of course, I have a dialogue with them. Uh, they are very serious. Uh, I do not always agree uh, when it comes to the conclusions that we that we come to. Uh, I would. They are not a liberal party, <laughs> and they are proud yeah. to not be a, a liberal party, and, and, and as such, not market liberal. Uh, in, in that regards, I do believe that they are closer to to the social democrats when it comes to, for example, subsidizing uh, sports. Uh, if you are a uh, a market liberal, you you prefer to to tax uh, gambling operators and perhaps uh, via that tax uh, subsidize uh, sports and culture, etc. Whereas uh, 
whereas the the Sweden Democrats, like the Social Democrats, don't have have anything particular against state-owned uh, operators that that um, uh, subsidize directly uh, sports and culture. So so that is uh, an obvious. Uh, an obvious um, difference between between the traditional center right wing parties and and the Swedish uh, the Sweden Democrats. Absolutely, and and when you talk to the moderate party, who is likely to uh, to put forward the, uh, the the candidate for prime minister and uh, and the other uh, right wing coalition parties, um, what's uh, what's their general thoughts on the gambling regulation do they do they want to open up the market uh, more is there potentially more restrictions based mm. on this what's what's your thoughts i don't think at least in a short uh, term that we will see uh, any uh, additional liberalization uh, the as i mentioned we still have a monopoly in yeah. sweden when it comes to mainly lotteries and also um, land-based casinos and, and land-based right. uh, bingos. I don't believe uh, that that in a short term we will see uh, any any initiatives uh, when it comes to that. However, uh, what is interesting to mention is that that um, the Social Democrat government the, just shortly, uh, I think it was in perhaps May or June, handed over a governmental bill to the parliament with uh, suggestions on um, uh, even harsher restrictions when it comes to to uh, uh, the possibility for marketing for, for uh, licensed operators. Uh, and uh, the at least the moderate party, not all of the parties, but the moderate party, they, they responded to, to that governmental bill and, and uh, in their own statement, they suggested to, to abolish uh, that suggestion. It's called adjusted moderation. And uh, frankly, no one actually understands what it means. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but but it, we do understand that, that uh, if it would be uh, um, accepted in, in the parliament, it would mean that that uh, we will we will in such case see even harsher uh, marketing restrictions and i think it's likely that 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 uh, suggestion on on uh, adjusted moderation will have a hard time to find support now in in the swedish parliament and we as trade association will certainly help those mps that uh, are hesitant about about um, additional uh, marketing restrictions since we want uh, the MPs and also the government to safeguard the Swedish licensing system uh, and uh, it is obviously of core value for the licensing system that licensed operators can market themselves and their products so uh, my my i guess qualified guess is that that uh, the adjusted moderation will not be uh, adopted by the parliament thanks to the new uh, parliamentary situation. It's also interesting if, if I may mention uh, um, another topic and it is even more sensitive and therefore not as likely uh, to see uh, a shift uh, as, as um, uh, marketing and that is uh, the, the bonus regulation. Uh, no uh, politician really wants to be outspoken when it comes to liberalization of, of, uh, of the bonusing system. But at the same time, it, it, it is obvious that we pay an extremely high price with the harsh regulation that we have today, namely that a lot of, of the, the Swedish online gambling customers prefer the unlicensed uh, offer out there. So every fourth Swedish krona when it comes to, to online casino actually leaks out of the licensing system. Mm -hmm. And the moderate party in that reaction, the one that I just spoke about, the reaction uh, towards the, the governmental bill, suggested uh, at least minor uh, uh, liberalizations when it comes to to the strict uh, prohibition on loyalty bonuses for online casino. Uh, obviously, uh, we we support that suggestion as well. Hmm. Interesting. Um, what I wanted to ask as well, um, I mean, uh, um, 
if uh, if it's now uh, the, the the right wing uh, uh, party uh, uh, taking over, it's kissed us on and, and so on. And obviously, the, the moderate party and the right uh, uh, wing coalition has a history of working uh, for entrepreneurs for. Uh, kind of starting your own business. These, these are uh, like, like kind of make your own career and and do the best you can for your individual prosperity. Say, um, so does do, do you think uh, as well that um, uh, based on based on that fact uh, that they generally tend to be friendlier towards uh, organizations and corporations, uh, coupled with the fact that uh, obviously you have yourself as a history in this party and presumably. Um, well connected and well respected in the party. Uh, does this, uh, do you think, also opens up uh, doors for better collaboration between the uh, arguing industry and the uh, politicians? Hopefully and perhaps, but not with certainty, because one shall remember uh, that the finance minister that we had uh, between 2006 and 2014, he was very keen on um, aiding companies like well, Spotify and Klarna and King and all, all, the, the, the tech wonder of, of Sweden, so to speak, uh, with one exception, and that was online gambling. Uh, after his time as prime minister, uh, Mr. Anders Borg, that's his name, has spent yes. a lot of time as investor in, in uh, other tech, tech companies. And hopefully, but without knowing, uh, he has also changed his mind uh, when it comes to, to uh, the, the, the tech wonder uh, uh, in Sweden when it comes to, to uh, uh, gambling. But I'm not sure. Obviously, well, well uh, to, to, to interrupt you here, Anders Borg is invested, this former Swedish uh, finance minister, he's invested in check-in. Dot com, which is uh, a supplier to the agami industry. They, mm. they, it's, uh, they work very close to, uh, to many of the right. uh, uh, operators. Here. So he, is, he has quite decent ties to the industry these days. Yeah. But I don't know. And actually, uh, if, if uh, I would be uh, offered to bet who will become the next finance minister, I would actually spend, uh, well, at least 100 Swedish krona. That's not much. That's <laughs> approximately... <laughs> uh, not, not these days. It's <laughs> no. not much. <laughs> right. But anyway, that's what I can afford. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would actually bet on, on hi him coming back. Uh, Interesting. That, yeah, that would be a challenge for for uh, the gambling industry unless he has changed his mind w regarding regarding uh, online gambling. And uh, I just want to stress that I am quite alone with with this forecast. Uh, most pe <laughs> people uh, suggest other uh, persons uh, as uh, um, our most likely coming uh, finance minister. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't he be too, um, I mean, considering now that he's invested in a lot of different uh, companies with Swedish ties, uh, even on the public markets, checking.com is a, is a publicly traded company. Don't you think it would be too much of a conflict of interest? Perhaps, but we have seen other ministers that have had uh, uh, multiple investments. I don't know exactly how they do it, but I, I assume they kind of freeze their investments uh, during during uh, the mandate period as minister. Uh, and um, it, it seems to be to be accepted by, by the parliament and the government and the Swedish population. Because on yep. the other hand, we want people, ordinary people as well as, as, well as uh, ministers to uh, own stocks and to, to invest. That's obviously positive and, and we want yeah. entrepreneurs and, and uh, company owners to, to become ministers as well. So, so uh, I, I don't think it, it's a huge uh, problem with, with uh, an interest conflict there. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Gustav, uh, Gustav, and last question from my side as well. I, I know that you are into uh, uh, political philosophy and, uh, and so on and so forth. Eh? Um, why is the monopoly, uh, the gambling monopoly, not uh, a, a good idea politically when it was working for decades and decades. Uh, why should uh, the, the free market take over? Well, to me, it's a question of moral. Uh, and well, I believe that that uh, the state shall be the rule setter. It, it shall set rules that that individuals and companies are obliged to obey. They have to comply with those rules. 
Uh, but in this case, uh, at least in Sweden, but also in many other jurisdictions, the, the state is tempted to also be uh, an aggressive uh, operator on the, on the field, so to speak. Uh, and as you know, it's, it's usually not a good idea that, that uh, the player and the judge is the same, uh, is the same person in, in a football match, for example. Uh, so I do believe that the, the state has a unique role uh, in gambling, such as in many areas, and that is to, to set up the rules that we that the rest of us have to follow. Um, and um, I believe that that uh, we kind of, at least to some degree, lose the respect uh, to the state when it is in fact uh, an aggressive player itself. Interesting. So the, the state should never compete with its citizens, in other words. Mm, correct. Yeah. Interesting. Gustav, thank you so much for coming on board here on very, very short notice to, to give some nuance on, on uh, the uh, potential uh, uh, shift in government uh, here. We are, we, are, we are taking some assumptions here as so there's still some votes to be counted. But like we said, it's looking very, very likely that this is actually going to happen. Yes, um, well, the, well, the pleasure was mine. If I just may, may say one final absolutely. thing, it is that uh, I know that, that you uh, operate from, from Malta. And one interesting thing is, of course, the foreign votes, Swedes that, that vote in, in uh, foreign and jurisdictions and those votes tend to to be biased so to speak on on center right wing uh, political parties so that is yet another reason for for me being yeah. quite certain about that yeah. we that we will see a shift this time so it's it's really really interesting uh, how important those those foreign votes uh, are did you vote pierre uh it's the first election that you put me on this spot now, and, and I have my uh, Valsedel next to me here. Uh, it's the first election I haven't voted. And I spoke to my friend Lassen if we were going to go down the other week, and we didn't manage to do it. So I feel, I feel ashamed that I have wasted my, uh, my vote here, and I didn't do my democratic uh, duty uh, this time around. It actually has bothered me, I must be, uh, I must be honest with you. So, um, yeah, it's one, one vote less for the moderate party, I can, I can say that. <laughs> okay. Yes. yes. <laughs> Um, I, actually, uh, before we close, I have, a, I have another question for you as well. So this uh, right-wing coalition is loosely tied together with uh, Swedish Democrats. The, the other center-right parties are not exactly friendly towards the mm -hmm. Sweden Democrats, but they need them to form uh, this coalition. Um, what happens now, if I understand it correctly, is that um, the coalition parties will now come together to negotiate. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, what uh, like what ministers will be divided, and what type of power will the different parties have? Um, is there a risk as well, considering how how anti uh, the, the other parties are against the Swedish Democrats, that they actually won't be able to uh, agree on this coalition, and um, one of these parties would move over to the to the left leaning coalition, and mm -hmm. actually the result might still be a continuation of. Uh, the uh, the uh, the left leaning mm. coalition is that a risk? Do you think there is a risk with everything? Uh, but mm. but uh, uh, I wouldn't spend much time on on uh, uh, digesting that that possibility. Uh, yeah. I find it really really likely that if we will have this outcome of the election, namely 175 votes for the center right wing uh, political parties and and 174 for for the the socialist uh, parties, that we will see a center right wing government. Uh, however, uh, an, an interesting question is of course. Uh, if all four uh, political parties will be included in that government or perhaps two or three. And if I would bet my own money, uh, I would bet for uh, a two-party uh, government with uh, the moderate party and the Christian Democrats. Um, I'm, I, don't, I do not know, of course. Uh, it's just a guess. But, but I believe that the liberals uh, and the Sweden Democrats will kind of take out each other. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, and as such, providing uh, or offering uh, the, the government to the Christian Democrats and the moderate party. But, well, we'll see in a couple of weeks. I believe that the process, by the way, will be quite fast. Uh, I don't remember how many days, 
130, 140, something like that, to form a government the last time. This time, I think uh, if we will have this uh, result, uh, that we will also know what kind of government we will have in a couple of weeks or so. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Well, thank you so much, uh, Gustav, again for coming on board here today to give some more nuance on the Swedish election and to, to give us a one-on-one here on Swedish politics. It's uh, always very interesting. Um, and I will see you and Valatta in a couple of weeks. Yeah, I look forward to meeting you all. Brilliant, brilliant. Thank you so much, Gustav. Thank you.